Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Crow View Note. And basically what we can do with this unit is turn any electronic that supports HDMI or USB Type-C video out into a portable 14 inch laptop. Like the Raspberry Pi, other single board computers, Android devices that support display over USB Type-C, like the Samsung Galaxy S line, I've got the S24 Ultra here, and this is one of my main use case scenarios using Samsung DeX with a portable uh, laptop like this. But another one would be plugging in something like the Steam Deck OLED or even the new ROG Ally X. And with this use case scenario, I could see myself using this quite a bit. In the last couple years, whenever I travel, I usually just bring a handheld gaming PC, iPad, and my S24 Ultra. So with the Crow View Note, I can turn any of those devices into a laptop. That way I've got a bigger screen, keyboard, and trackpad, so when I need to get work done, I can do it much easier on a device like this. It's actually a lot lighter and thinner than I thought it would be. It's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery built in, but the first thing I noticed here is it is constructed of plastic. I actually was under the impression that this was going to be an aluminum chassis, and I think that's why I thought it was going to be much heavier than it is, but it is built of plastic. Now, first and foremost, this was really designed with the Raspberry Pi 5 and the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So it does come with some daughter boards here to allow us to connect either one of those single board computers quite easily to this unit. We can also use the built-in battery to power said single board computer. And in this video, I will be demonstrating the Raspberry Pi 5. And this is the daughter board for the Pi 5. Basically, we're going to plug one end into the I.O. on the Raspberry Pi 5. The other end goes into the side of the laptop itself. That way, we've got everything nice and neat. Overall, not a bad design, 14 inch, 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, full keyboard with all of the hotkeys we need so we can actually adjust the brightness. It's got a built in OSD battery monitor, nice little trackpad here. It's not glass covered. Again, this is all constructed of plastic. Taking a look at the I.O. over here on the left hand side, we've got a full size USB port, mini HDMI and USB type C. It seems that this USB type C port is for power delivery only. But moving over to the right hand side, we've got another USB Type-C port, and this will do video in. It's got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another full size USB port, and our power input. This is actually a 3.5 millimeter interface, and uh, just works with the charger that's included. First things first, let's go ahead and get this Raspberry Pi 5 connected. Uh, by the way, I've got an Argon cooler on this, and it is overclocked to 3 gigahertz. Basically, what we're going to do is grab the Pi 5 daughter board. We're going to plug the Pi in here so our USB Type-C, both HDMIs, line up. So with this single daughter board connected, we've got our power input and video output from the Pi 5 covered. But there's one more thing we need to plug in to get that USB connection. So we're actually going to be taking up one of the USB 3 ports on the Pi 5. That way, it'll send that signal back from the keyboard and trackpad, and we can use it directly with any operating system on the Pi. If you've seen any of Crow Pi's older Raspberry Pi laptops, you know they were pretty bulky. They were pretty thick because the Raspberry Pi sat internally. I actually like this design a bit more because it's more universal. I mean, we've got it right here on the side. If you don't want to use a Pi, you don't have to. You can always connect over mini HDMI or USB Type-C. So I've just turned the unit on and this will deliver 5 volts, 5 amps from that USB Type-C over on the side here. That way we can truly power that Raspberry Pi 5. And again, I do have this overclocked to 3 gigahertz. I gotta say, the display actually looks pretty good. 1080p IPS with 100% sRGB. And some people might be worried about, you know, having a Pi hanging off the side of a laptop. This thing isn't going to go anywhere. It's connected with that mini HDMI, USB, and USB Type-C. It's actually a pretty tight connection here. And they did send along a Jetson Nano adapter, so if you wanted to use something with a bit more power, you definitely could. Alright, so here we are, Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, up top here, we do have a bunch of hotkeys, our volume, we've also got our brightness, and there's a full OSD built in. And one thing I noticed, like I mentioned, was this actually supports FreeSync, which I was pretty surprised about. But we've got all of the basics here, contrast, saturation, brightness, you can set up cooler tones, warmer tones, it's really up to you. You can kind of dial this in. But I gotta say, I mean, it's actually a pretty good looking IPS display we have here. Those built-in dual stereo speakers at 100% do sound a bit tinny, so if I turn them down to around 80%, not bad, and it's definitely loud enough. But just keep in mind, I mean, you know, when this thing's pegged out, you will hear a little bit of tinny sound. It's definitely because we've got that plastic chassis and it's kind of echoing inside. 
But yeah, with the Raspberry Pi connected, you could definitely get some work done. You could also have a lot of fun with this. You could set up emulation station on this if you want to, but you know, I already had Raspberry Pi OS installed, ready to go. Built-in keyboard works just fine. And this is all connected over USB. We don't have to use any kind of dongles, you know, have a Bluetooth connection for that trackpad and that keyboard. In the past, I have seen some of these portable laptops need to be connected over Bluetooth. So with that physical connection, no input latency. We do have gestures with this trackpad also. And I did try to sideswipe, but I'm not sure if Pi OS actually supports that or not. So that up and down two finger swipe does work. I'll test it out with uh, Samsung DeX in just a second because I know for a fact that works. But overall with the Raspberry Pi 5 connected, pretty good experience with the desktop operating system. The next thing I wanted to test out was one of my main use case scenarios for a device like this, Samsung DeX. I've got that Galaxy S24 Ultra, and keep in mind, anything from the Galaxy S8 on up does support Samsung DeX, which means when you plug your device into an external display, you can get that desktop operating system. And this works really well with a keyboard and trackpad. A bigger screen is a must, and the Samsung Galaxy Tab line, the Tab S line, does support DeX. You can actually use that on the tablet's built-in screen, but even with those, I usually connect it to a larger display. And it looks like sideswiping isn't working here with Samsung DeX. Now, I know for a fact that it does work in the DeX operating system, but for some reason, with the Crow Pie Note, it's just not registering. And of course, when you're using Samsung DeX, you can still use your phone like a phone. We could actually run dual apps here, run one on the phone's built-in screen, and then one on this external Crow Pie Note. Not too bad here. Usually I lose, you know, my trackpad input when I'm using the keyboard at the same time. With this, it's actually working really well. So yeah, I could definitely see myself using something like this when I'm traveling. You know, video editing on your phone or photo editing on a larger screen just works out so much better. And there are a lot of apps over on Google Play that really take advantage of the full screen experience. And by the way, we do have a battery indicator for the laptop itself, because after all, it's got that 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's actually going to be used for the keyboard, trackpad, and the screen itself. And since we've got our phone plugged in here, we're also charging that battery. So up in the hotkey area, it'll just tell us how much battery we've got left. And the final thing I wanted to test here was a handheld gaming PC connected to this unit. I'm going to be using the Asus ROG Ally X. And with this, we do have two USB type C's up top. One is USB 4, one is 3.2, but both support video out. I'm just plugged into that 3.2 port. And I'm really glad they added dual USB-C on the ROG Ally X. That way, while we're plugged into something like this, we can plug another charger into the device to keep that battery up on the handheld itself. Trackpad and keyboard are working just fine with this Windows handheld. And one thing I took a look at was just to make sure FreeSync was enabled over USB Type-C. And it works fine here as long as you've got an AMD system that supports FreeSync. This is going to work with it over USB Type-C or Mini HDMI. That way, we're not going to get any kind of screen tearing when we go under that threshold. Really nice little feature to have on this laptop. Of course, I had to show off a little bit of gaming with this thing, and I've got it in mirror mode right now, but you could set it up to only be displayed on the uh, external display here with that Crow Pie view, or we could set it up as kind of an extended desktop. But right now we're just in mirror mode. It's just going to work as a secondary monitor. Overall, I think it's a pretty nice little setup. Now, there are a few things I would love to see changed down the road, maybe with the next revision. Obviously, we're going to need a bigger battery. We've got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery here. It'll do 5 volts, 5 amps out, and we could charge our phone up. We could run the Pi for a little while, but it's not going to last all day long if we've got a device plugged in like the Pi that has to use that battery along with the LCD screen, keyboard, and trackpad. Another thing I'd love to see is just a metal version. Now, of course, they wanted to keep the cost down here, constructed of plastic, but, you know, to have a more premium feel would be really awesome.
But either way, it does work as intended. We can connect a ton of different devices to this. And like I mentioned, as long as that device supports HDMI out or video over USB Type-C, it's gonna work with the Crow Pi No. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Crow Pi No, I'll leave some links to their official website down below. And like always, thanks for watching.